Louis Gossett Jr. The beloved performer of screen and stage was the first black man to win an Oscar in a supporting role in 1983 for the movie An Officer and a Gentleman. I don't believe what I'm seeing. You better stop eyeballing me, boy. That's a miracle. That's a blessing. Born in Brooklyn in 1936, Gossett got his first acting role at 17 on Broadway. By 22, he was working alongside legends Sidney Poitier and Ruby Dee in Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun. Then Hollywood came calling. We never relax. In 1977, Gossett earned an Emmy playing Fiddler in Roots, the most watched miniseries in history at the time. I say that. You did? Folks thought he was the Uncle Tom of the series. It was a mistake. So a mistake. He's not an yeah. Uncle Tom? No, there was no such thing as an Uncle Tom. Without that survival thing, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. You said you wanted to meet me in private? But it was his riveting portrayal of a drill sergeant opposite Richard Gere in the film An Officer and a Gentleman that made him a superstar. The winner is Lou Gossett Jr. And the first black man to win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Did you believe it? No, I didn't. That's supposed to be possible. That's a piece, piece of, of history. history. 81, 21 talk, season four, episode... Five. Five. We are episode five already. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a subject matter ready, but we scrapped it. Because? Because I feel an icon passed away today. Definitely. An icon. Definitely an icon. In my eyes, a superstar. Right, The right. bridge. Right. Mr. Lewis Gossett Sr. Sr. No, it's actually I it was Junior. Junior. Okay, well, I messed up. You know, <laughs> actually, it's Lewis Gossett Jr. I just feel we should do a podcast on this guy because, like we were discussing earlier, he's been here. Yeah, he was here before us. He was here when we were learning how to walk. Right. He was here when we graduated high school. Right. And he was still going. It's crazy because he was born in 1937. No, 36. No, it was 37. I thought Morgan was born in 37. No, he was born in 37 and so was Cosby. But Cosby's birthday is in July and Louis Gossett, or Lou Gossett, whichever one you want to call him, just turned. Um, he just had his birthday, March 27th. Right, so he, he, 80, he was 87? 87. Right, and Bill Cosby would be 87 in July. Crazy. But it's crazy. 1937, um, we weren't thought of. No. And our parents were not thought were of. Not thought of. think about this. We weren't thought of or anything like that. And he passed away today at the age of 87. And we're 56. Six. Right. He did his thing. So all our life, right? He's, he's been there. He's been there. He's been there. Crazy, right? He is what I would call a giant, an mm -hmm. icon, like I said before. And he is also... Those shoulders that people have stood right, over. a trailblazer, yeah. all that, yeah. all that. So we're gonna get this intro in, okay. and then we're gonna come right back. There's so much in my mind. What if you run out of time? Take it one step at a time. So many mountains to climb. I've been obsessed to grind. So I be one of a kind. So the car never declines, so the car never declines There's so much in my mind, what if you run out of time? Take it one step at a time, so many mountains to climb I went obsessed to grind, so I be one of a kind So the car never declines, so the car never declines It's Alan Milandi, it's got, got, got to be more careful Yeah, 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 yeah Oh, okay, that's and how that you boy downstairs again Living in the basement. <laughs> that boy downstairs in the basement again. Thanos. Thanos. So, um... I, I was just thinking while we was listening to the intro. Yeah. His first film, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. was 1961. And that was? A Raisin in the Sun. A Raisin in the Sun. But think about it. My mother was born in 1953. Right. In 1961, she was only eight. Right. That is crazy. And my mother was born in 48. Right. So in 1961, she was 13. Right. Yeah. 
That is crazy. It's like this man has been, he's been there. Even the greats that he was working with back then, they're right. all gone, right. right? They're all gone. The, none of them uh, that the, he started out with. Uh, I don't know about started out with, but the, the greats, you know, and we're going to talk about predating, like, mm -hmm. you know, the Harry Belafonte, mm -hmm. the uh, Sidney Poitier. Right. Uh, he was not there before Paul Robinson, Robes, Robeson, mm -hmm. but I put him up there. You know what I mean? Like, right. Pioneer. Just a straight right. pioneer. But you said in 1961, his first film was Raisin in the Sun. Mm -hmm. Is that not a classic? It is a classic. It is a classic with Sidney Poitier, mm -hmm. Ruby D. And was it Lorraine Hansberry? She wrote it. Hasbury? She wrote it. Okay. She wrote it. Uh, classic play. Yeah. Uh, I always identified with Walter, which was Sidney Poitier's uh, character. character. But uh, Lou Gossett, he wasn't a main character. Right. But he was a, the boyfriend of someone in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But that's 1961. That's seven years before we were born got a classic under his belt. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't talk about every aspect of his life, mm -hmm. but what I thought we would do is talk about those films that he did that was like, yeah, that's it. Right, right, right. Now, me personally, mm, it's tough. But the first time I noticed him mm -hmm. was Good Times. Good Times. He was Thelma's uh, boyfriend. The older man. Yeah, and he was a lot older. He was like James's age. Right. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What was the first time you noticed him? The first time I noticed him? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't even know. He had some movies out while we were children that I liked. Right, right. But the first... The, like I told you earlier, whenever I think of Lou Gossett, I think of one movie. Oh, what's that? Enemy Mine. Okay. Enemy Mine. Yeah. Classic. It was. Classic. But, and I break, guess but, yeah, I guess what was so amazing uh -huh. about it is, is that he had the baby. Yeah. He was a uh an alien on a planet. Drac. I think they were called and the Drax or something with, like that. Was it Dennis Quaid? I, I, I forgot. think it was Dennis oh, Quaid. Okay, I got was good, it Dennis I got Quaid? A good memory right there. You know I what think saying? it was Dennis Quaid. I'm not sure. It might be. Might not but be. But he it was a reptilian race. Yes. And Think about it in 85, the makeup, it wasn't like it is that now. That was 85? Yeah. The yeah. makeup wasn't like it was now, See, but it was still, it was still something that was like, oh man, he's a alien, a reptile. Well, basically. for me, metaphorically speaking, that movie to me was like really exploring black and white. Oh, definitely. Two different races. You know, there was an alien race. He was a reptilian race. Mm -hmm. and there was a the, the human race. Yeah. And they were at war, weren't they? Right. Or something like that. But then two enemies had to work together yeah. to survive. To survive. And to bring that baby into the, the, baby, to the world. Which uh, I think Lou Gossett's, the character he was playing, the alien, was asexual. So, right. So they could have uh, they could have babies. Mm -hmm. uh, great movie. Mm -hmm. And you said that was around 85. Yep. I, I want to go back a little further. OK. That. For me, landmark role he played was Fiddler. Fiddler. And Roots. And Roots. Oh, my goodness. Now, we were children, children back then. 1977. 1977. We were nine. We were nine years old. And I remember when that movie uh, well, TV series came on TV. Uh, the streets were clear. Yeah. Everybody watched that. Where I was at. Were you able to watch it? Yeah. Like your yeah. mom was okay with you watching yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. For yeah. some reason, my father didn't want us to watch it. I can understand why. You know? I can understand why. Um, so many things happened in that series that defined how I viewed slavery mm -hmm. because there was no real representation of what it was mm -hmm. for me. I can't right, speak for everybody right. else. Then when I saw it, I'm like, whoa, right. That's what we had to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but Lou Goss's character there, Fiddler, mm -hmm. I remember a debate that um, amongst friends when I was growing yeah, up, yeah. that Lou Gossett was an uncle Tom in that, right. in that show. Right. I never agree with that mm -hmm. as his character being an Uncle Tom. I'm sorry, Fiddler. Should I say Fiddler was an Uncle mm -hmm. Tom? 
Uh, what it showed me, and I and I read something about it this morning. We had to survive. We did. And the was it Master Mo? I don't know what the I don't way remember dude's what name, Master name was. But um, he put Fiddler in charge of Kunta Kente. Mm-hmm. So every time Kunta ran mm-hmm. or was rebellious, Fiddler had to pay he the had price to pay for it. Yeah. And he, there's a great scene where he tells him, "Hey." And when you ran, you would think about yourself. We all in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the scene that we listened to this morning when um, he was talking about the day that they did the the famous, famous scene, which is, what's your name? What's your name? Kunta. Wap. Toby. Toby. Right? But yeah, that was one of um, Lou Gossett's role that I thought was 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 just... Outstanding. Mm-hmm. What about you? What did you What did you think about him in Roots? I don't really remember Roots okay. like that because okay. I mean, of course, I've seen it, uh-huh. but like I told you, it wasn't like I was able to see it when it first came out. Right. Um, we watched some of it, but it, there was a lot of covering up the eyes and cover your ears up because really? Daddy would be like, "Oh, you can't watch that part," and you know, at nine, I have a little understanding, but not a lot of understanding. Well, if you were to watch that afterwards, you would have had a great understanding. Yeah. You know? And so I watched it again in my young adulthood, but I don't remember details of the movie like yeah. you do. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was an all-star cast. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, definitely. Leslie Uggams. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben Vereen. Mm-hmm. He was Chicken George, I think. And then uh, I'm, LeVar I'm, Burton. LeVar Burton was Kunta. He played Kunta, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Sally Duncan, the white chick, which that part of the movie infuriated me. Mm-hmm. You remember Kizzy was her, her playmate. maid, yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, companion, and she they call it. Referred to her as her little nigger doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. So I don't want to get caught up in that. But Lou Gossett was powerful there. Mm-hmm. Can I move on to the next? The yes, next one? and yes. we we just give him his homage. Right. So if you're younger and you haven't seen these, go watch go back him. and watch him. Go watch him. Next one. Officer and a gentleman. Oh yeah. Oh my God. That was really good. See, for me, me have been to boot camp before. Mm-hmm. You have too. Mm-hmm. Two roles in Hollywood's time period where I've been watching movies define what I felt. Okay, that's a drill sergeant. Drill sergeant mm-hmm. or drill instructor, or company commander. Depends on what you're doing. One was Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. He was off the chain. He was. You are a disgusting fat body. I don't remember that guy's name. Oh, what was his name? I don't remember. But he was on point. He did a good job. Great job. He did a great job. I didn't know they stacked shit as high, as tall as you. Right. Oh. Right. You look like the type of guy that'll, uh, what he said, uh, something and not give the guy courtesy of a reach around. Yeah. Oh, he went Yeah, Yeah, he did go in, which is crazy because... When I went to basic in 86 mm-hmm. and everything, they had already, um, not already, but females and males were still separate. Right. 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 So we didn't get to experience. Wait, they're not separate no more? No, everything is and co-ed. Boot camp? I think it's, okay. I think All they right. co-ed. All right. But our drill sergeants were, a little rough on us, yeah, but not as rough as they were on the males. Yeah. So we could hear them across the way mm-hmm. screaming and hollering at the males. And I remember my drill sergeant telling me, "Hey, the, y'all, you y'all are my first female cycle." So he was trying to. We kind of played it by ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. but but I, I say that to say. That guy, I don't remember his name. He was a good representation. But I feel Lou Gossett's story, his arc was more complete in that show. Right. Because you, he comes in and he's breaking Richard Gere. Right. And he took him there. Mm-hmm. They even fought. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. They even fought all the way down to the end, like I said, the arc. Mm-hmm. Now he has to salute Richard Gere because right. Richard Gere becomes an officer. Right. Great, great it was. It was really good. Uh, he won an Oscar for that. Mm-hmm. Let's give him a round of applause. He was the first African-American to win a supporting actors, 
African African American male mm-hmm. to win a supporting um, actor's Oscar. Did I just say all that right? That was a lot. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And that was in 82 when that movie came yeah, out? Yeah, we were in the eighth, mm-hmm. eighth grade. Eighth grade. I'll bring it up. What, what we got? What's next? Hmm. Mm. I don't mm. know. You tell me. So you got those three of our favorites. Well, Enemy Line was your favorite. Mm-hmm. So you got Officer and a Gentleman. You have, what else did I say? There uh, were so many of them. And then there's there's movies that I like, and now I can't even think. Yeah, so um, Officer and a Gentleman, but there was something out he put out around that same time in the 80s. Uh, I forgot what it was. I am really disrespecting this man's legacy right Where's now. Where's your phone? My phone is right here. Uh, but yeah, I can't call it. What is it? It was Deep Something. There was one that I like was Deep Something. Deep? Yeah, and then there was, dang, we got to be ashamed of ourselves. Why are we going to do this? Uh, you know, on the air, live. Right. Mm-mm-mm. So there is... Let me see. Jaws. Jaws 3. That was in 83. Yeah. Jaws 3. Uh, this Officer the Gentleman, Iron Eagle. That was in 86. Iron Eagle was good. Yeah. I liked Iron Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of feel like Tom Cruise's Top um is kind of the it, same what's it called? thing. Top Gun. Top Gun. It's kind of the same Top thing. Top Gun is about the same as Iron Eagle. Uh-huh. And Iron Eagle was out first. Mm-hmm. And you had Iron Eagle 2, came out in 88. Mm-hmm. Then you had Iron Eagle three, four. I didn't. I ain't. Yeah. I ain't watch all them. Uh, hmm. The Punisher. Iron Eagle three was called Access. Iron Eagle. Okay. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Firewalker. Oh, I forgot about Firewalker. Uh, Digstown. Digstown. Yeah. Digstown. Yep. Uh, the Deep. The that, Deep. That's, that's going, the name of it. That's going back to seventy seven. Mm-hmm. Toy Soldiers. Uh, you work with Tyler Perry, Daddy's Little Girl. Yeah. Uh, Cover Up, 1991. The Grace Card, 2010. If, 20, he did that in 2024. Uh, World at War, Left Behind. Um, did you ever see that? The Left Behind series? Yeah. I didn't see it, but I read the books. Woo. J.D.'s Revenge, 1976, mm-hmm. which I was talking to you about. That that was with Glenn Turman. Mm-hmm. If you don't know who that is, that's Preach from Cooley High. Great movie. Uh, El Diablo, Skin Game, uh, The Cuban, Laughing Policeman, uh, Carolina Skeletons, Foster Boy, Inspectors, Choir Boys, Smitty, Jasper, Texas. He, it, it goes on and on. What's crazy is, like we said, you said he's the bridge, the shoulders that these mm-hmm. other actors have mm-hmm. stood up on. Mm-hmm. I say a trailblazer. He's cleared the path for them. Mm-hmm. He started on Broadway first, right? In the early 50s. Okay. And then he raised in the sun, which was a Broadway play before they made it into a movie, Big right? screen, right? Right. And then his last, very last movie that he did was color purple. Wow. In 19, I mean, in 2024. So he started in 61. All the way up to 2024. All the way up to 2024. Before we was born and we're 56. So what he's been doing this for 61. So that was seven years before we was born and we're 56. So 63 years. Yeah. He has spanned that time. And he has still remained relevant yeah. in everything. He's Respected. not one of those actors that just, oh, made a couple of movies and then you wonder, oh, where are they at now? Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. And and the thing about Lou Gossett is, and, you know, I, I don't know if I said this already, but I have to repeat it. So you have a gauge. You remember back in the day, you have the TV guide? Mm-hmm. And you might see a commercial on TV saying this new movie is coming mm-hmm, out. Mm-hmm. So he, for me, he was a gauge. Meaning, if he's in that movie, it's it's going to be good. It's good. Yeah. Right. There's no doubt. Right. So he was one of those names. And the reason I say shoulders because you have people like you know Mahershala Ali. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how I say his name. Mahershala. Mahershala. Mm-hmm. You have Wesley Snipes. Mm-hmm. You have Denzel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a lot of black uh, male actors. Right. That were, you know, that are doing it. And I feel like Lou Gossett was the example. 
He was. And because he was able to make it. Yeah. Doing that crazy thing. That time. gave them yeah. hope and say, you know what? Mr. Gossett, because I'm sure they called him Mr. Gossett. I'm sure. Mr. Gossett made it. I can do it. I'm sure by no means am I disrespecting the Harry Belafonte's. Mm -hmm. We talked about Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Uh, oh, Sidney Portier. Mm -hmm. We're not disrespecting them. Oh, no. But Lou Gossett just had that other thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Sidney Portier was always, was it trim, prim, and proper? Always. 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 But I kind of agree with Eddie Murphy said, you know, I don't know if you see Eddie Murphy telling that joke about, you know, if you notice like Sidney Poitier's hair was never combed in any movies. Mm. He said that's brilliant acting because he's mm -hmm. acting like his hair is combed. <laughs> but but he was he was regal. He mm -hmm. was I always. Yeah. Uh, Bill Cosby was very talented and he was all over the place. Uh, I spy. Mm -hmm. I did not know. You told me that there was a. The Bill Cosby Show mm -hmm. in 1969. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. And then who else did we say? Uh, well, Harry Belafonte. Mm -hmm. uh, was that Harry Belafonte? I think it is. That was in the old movies like Porgy and Bess. Yeah. And all that old yeah. stuff. Oh, Pioneers. Right. But if you take those actors and you looked at what they put on screen, like mm -hmm. to have Harry Belafonte play a street guy. Mm -hmm. eh, not right. really. You so, me? Yeah, what you're saying is Lou Gossett played a range of different characters. Yeah. He went from, wow, I don't even know what to say. He went from a playing, frustrated boyfriend in 1961. Right, to a bougie. To an enemy. To an a alien. alien. A alien in 1985. To a DI, a yeah. instructor. Yeah, it's just his, his range of characters, the roles that he played. A it, boxer. It was some of everything. Air pilot. Right. Uh, whatever. Everything. Whatever. He played everything. He did it all. Lou the Gossett. only thing he didn't do was play president. Yes, he did. In which movie? Oh, uh, wow. It was either The Left Behind or it was another movie where it was the end. And that reminds me of another joke. Like, I heard a comedian saying, you know, when a black man plays the president. Mm -hmm. It's over it's with. It's over with. <laughs> hey, they were saying that about Morgan Freeman, who's another mm -hmm. one. But that's a whole different thing. Right. Like, Morgan has that range too, because I've seen movies where Morgan's playing a pimp and he's slapping somebody. Oh yeah. Morgan yeah, has yeah. been gritty in some yeah, movies. Yeah. And so has Lou Gossett. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. He has definitely been gritty in some movies. My thing, Lou Gossett, when I used to see him on, you know, different things, mm -hmm. I would see that bald head. Mm -hmm. And I would see the fly collar, mm -hmm, those with, mm -hmm. and, and that choker rope chain around right. his neck. I thought he was slick. Like he ooh. was. He was. Yeah. But Lou Gossett, icon, yeah. legend, and he passed away actually today. 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 So March 27th, 1937 oh, to yeah, March 29th, 2024. Say that again because I talked over you, my bad. March 27th, 1937 to March 29th, 2024. A life well lived. Two days after his birthday. Yeah. Two days after his birthday. Salute. Mr. Lewis Gossett Jr. Mr. Lewis Gossett Jr. And we could go on and on, but we can't because he's right. had such a long career. I'm just saying, respect that thing, man. That's right. Respect that thing. And we're going to end this show with a, a Lou Gossett clip from a movie, an um, oral, because mm -hmm. uh, we can't show it to you. Right. But... Uh, which I think is one of his most powerful uh, scenes ever. Or, right. And before we go, our condolences to his family, yep. friends, yep. and everyone who he's touched throughout right. his 87 years on this earth. Lou Gossett, what you said, March 27th, 1937, 37. Uh, Coney Island, New York, I think where he was mm -hmm. born at. I think he grew up in Long Island. Uh, rest in peace, sir. Rest in peace, sir. Excuses. Hey, look, honey, we're going to the theater. We're not going to be in it, you know. Oh, George, I don't like that. Do you expect this boy to go out with you looking like that? Well, now that's up to George, if he's ashamed of his heritage. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Here we go again. A lecture on our African past, on our great West African heritage. 
In one second, you know, we're going to hear all about the great Ashanti empires and the Songhai civilizations, the, the sculpture of Benin, some poems and the Bantu, and then the whole monologue is going to end up with the word heritage. Let's face it, baby, your heritage ain't nothing but a bunch of raggedy spirituals in some grass huts. Grass huts? Why, you see, George, you see, you would rather stand there in your splendid ignorance and know absolutely nothing about the people who were the first to smelt iron on the face of this earth while the Ashantis were performing surgical operations. When the English were still tattooing themselves with blue dragons. Blue dragons. Blue dragons. There's so much in my mind What if you run out of time? Taking one step at a time So many mountains to climb I've been obsessed to grind So I'd be one of a kind So the car never declines So the car never declines There's so much in my mind What if you run out of time? Taking one step at a time So many mountains to climb I've been obsessed to grind So I'd be one of a kind So the car never declines So the car never declines Alan Elandi is get, get, get to be more careful.